So good morning, everyone, and welcome to this digitalfilipino.com free webinar session about the tax guidelines for e-commerce transactions. Uh, thank you very much for joining. This webinar session is organized to give an explanation about an article that we published lately about the BAR uh, tax guidelines, the RMC 55-2013, which, which intends to clarify how e-commerce um, transactions are taxed. No? And if you have any questions at any point, all you need to do is just press that raise your hand button or use the questions box to type in any questions. The RMC took effect last August 5, 2013. Um, let me first state that in the e-commerce law or Republic Act 8792, when it first came out, uh, the premise for the law is that, especially when the IRR uh, got written or the implementing rules and regulations, it stated there that neutral tax treatment shall apply. When we say neutral, it means that there is no special preference. So whatever is applicable in the offline world is applicable in the online world. So for the record, the e-commerce law was passed in the year 2000. So technically, the law is now um, 13 years old, no? And it is the first time after 13 years that the Bureau of Internal Revenue has released guidelines on how taxation can apply in relation to e-commerce. And, and explaining it properly, and I guess uh, one of the reasons that, that tend to lead to this were, well, there were several reasons. First, there's a growing number of uh, consumer complaints uh, being received in relation to e-commerce transactions about products not being delivered, people getting scammed, or uh, products, uh, maybe some of them get damaged and they cannot uh, fight for their uh, warranties, uh, among others, due to lack of a paper trail that can be used to um, uphold the warranties or whatever benefits that a consumer is entitled to. Furthermore, uh, we also know that when people sell online, there are... There are many ways where products can be sourced. There is the legitimate way where you can get from dealers, suppliers, among others. And then there is also another way, of course, there are people who are who who get smuggled goods, no, among others, no. And and sometimes products that are not authorized to be distributed in the Philippine market gets distributed here and it is being sold to through unofficial channels or sometimes even official channels. Like, for instance, we've, we've heard of news about fake medicines or products that have been banned in other countries that are being marketed here. Uh, the difference between a registered business and a, non, and a non-registered business is that in, a, in an ideal world, um, registered businesses can only carry products that have adequate permits, meaning that they can guarantee safety uh, for the consumers, uh, among others. While on the other hand, selling on your own, of course, you put a lot of good faith on the person selling that he or she will be selling products that are safe and are sourced uh, legitimately. No, so and then okay, that's the first part. No, the second part also is that there is it is noticeable that e-commerce is growing in the country. It was only last year or two years ago when we started seeing dot-com companies advertising on television. They now have big billboards. Uh, they now have large print ads uh, promoting their websites. And then you see a lot of people selling products and services onto, on those websites. It, cre it, uh, it created that impression that e-commerce has already reached its mainstream. And of course, when the government started spotting it, especially the Bureau of Internal Revenue, they saw a lot of people selling products and services online. And um, I think one of the challenges that they encountered, especially also with the complaints that they got from the Philippine Retailers Association during our initial hearing uh, last year, there are uh, a lot of merchants selling products and services that, that don't do it you know, how retail, how formal retailers are required, which is to issue receipts, uh, among others. And uh, some of them are also selling uh, knockoff items, no, among others. Therefore, it created that uh, pressure. So 
the when when we had that hearing last year at the Bureau of Internal Revenue, the BAR is saying that they're not there to crack down the small players. In fact, what they're very concerned with was when they were looking at some of the listings in the various marketplaces was some of the entities who were selling motorcycles, among others, are not registered with the BAR, meaning they put a listing and they indicate that they have a company name, but actually when the BAR checks their database, the company is not in the database at all. So, so it puts um, consumers in trouble. No, it, 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 uh, it puts them in a situation where they thought that the merchants who were selling products and services online are legitimate to begin with because they were positioning themselves as legitimate entrepreneurs but actually, they were not legitimate entrepreneurs. So that is the purpose of the guideline. I think we should always look at it that a guideline, a government, when it creates a guideline, the first and primary intention is to protect the consumer. The second intention is to protect the legitimate players out there. Uh, the third intention is, of course, for government to fulfill its need to collect taxes and be fair to everyone that they collect taxes from. And so that a sector will not say, Bakit ganon? We're paying our taxes and they don't pay taxes. You keep on auditing us and yet you're not running after people who don't pay taxes. So parang it puts a it puts them in that uh, situation. No? So I may sound, I know I may sound too sympathetic, but I think I want to put it in that tone. Um, kasi kung makikirara din ako na uh, it's not good, then it's hard because you will always be hearing the same type of voices. So it's important to have a balance of voices. No? Okay, next. Um, the guidelines indicated the Bureau of Internal Revenue's understanding as to what are the different types of e-commerce transactions. It indicated B2C, which involves online stores selling goods and services to final consumers. So meaning... If you put up a website and then you sell goods, so meaning per piece na products, or you sell services like training, among others, uh, to your consumers that where people can buy tickets, among others, then that is a B2C transaction or business to consumer. A consumer to consumer transaction is where one person is selling a product or service to another person and vice versa. This is to business uh, encompasses um, a website selling its products and services to business. So it is possible that an online entrepreneur might have customers that are B2C or business to consumer. It might also have customers that will fall into the category of B2B, meaning they also sell to businesses. For instance, if you are in the conference business or let's say you offer subscription for web hosting for that matter. People who will avail your web hosting can either be a company uh, wanting to put their website onto your server or a, pers a person who would like to put his or her blog or her personal website onto your server. So you can either be catering to a, a business or to a consumer. Therefore, your service can be on a B2B or on a B2C perspective. By the way, if you have any questions at any time, don't hesitate to press that raise your hand button. Now, people have always been asking, if I will start an e-commerce business, what are the requirements? Um, are the, what are the guidelines? Are there special requirements? By default, uh, if you want to put up an e-commerce business, it is treated like any other business. So, for example, if you're selling products online, you can register a company and classify it under general trading. You know? Um, if you are uh, selling clothes, then it's, it can also qualify under general trading, although you can put boutique as part of your company name. But if you want to be, if you want to be uh, generic enough so that you can be flexible on the kinds of products and services that you can sell, you can also put general merchandise, no? among others. However, um, another requirement, apart from registering your business with the DPI or the Securities and Exchange Commission, depending on the nature of your business, whether you are a sole proprietor, a partnership, or a corporation, you also need to register with the Bureau of Internal Revenue. Uh, you need to go, you need to register your business at the revenue district having jurisdiction over your principal place of business or head office. If you are an individual, then that would be your place of residence. So, for example, if you are caught in a situation where 
um, you're not really registering a company, but you're just registering your service as an individual. Like uh, maybe you are doing consulting work or maybe you are doing uh, training works and you need to issue receipts from time to time as they are requested. Or maybe you're doing a consulting-related type of uh, task. Then you can also register as an individual. Regardless, what is important at the end of the day is that anyone who sells products or services online should be capable of issuing an official receipt. Now, there, there were issues before, like what if your clientele uh, is a foreigner? Um, if they are foreigners, are you also required to issue them an official receipt since uh, the services are rendered online and does not necessarily translate to um, them uh, being Philippine business that you render services to. I think a good analogy would be like a hotel. No? Diba? In a hotel, your hotel can serve guests. Some of your guests will be local. Some of your guests will be foreign. And it doesn't mean that the customer who walks into your hotel is a foreigner. You don't issue them an official receipt anymore. Since the service gets consummated, you still need to issue them an official receipt. Now, if how about a business center? Let's say you have a place of business and what one of the services that you offer is that you offer a business center, like you have a mailbox, uh, among others, that people can subscribe to. Um, if that is the case, then even if the clients are foreigners, actually, technically, since as long as, as whatever sale you have made, um, in an ideal world, you should be able to issue receipts to them. Um, of course, some people would say, in reality, not all customers will demand receipts from you. So what 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 happens in those uh, situations? I guess it's hard to say, but of course, if you will play it by default, at the end of the day, you should issue receipts. Now, if you have reasons for one, if you have reasons or you have special agreements, like maybe you are doing an XD, what have you, or whatever agreement you may have with that customer. Um, I guess your judgment call will come in. Or uh, the best way to do it is to consult an accountant and let your accountant give you the best uh, advice or decision as they are more qualified to give you that kind of uh, decision. However, if you are a growing brand, you're gaining popularity, you're gaining recognition, uh, you're making a name for yourself, I think it, I think it is important to play it safe and don't put you don't put yourself in a situation where your integrity will be compromised just because you did not issue receipts. So it is important that you do the best that you can uh, to protect it. No, baka, baka the amount that you will save for not issuing receipts will be will cost you irreparable damage in terms of your integrity, especially kung halimbawa bako compromise ka in the future. So if you're an individual, you can. Uh, Fill up the BAR form 1901 so that you can register as an individual. For corporations or partnerships, uh, you can fill up BAR form 1903. And then you can pay the registration fee at your authorized uh, agent bank located with your, within your RDO um, or the revenue district office. Uh, ang kadalasan na authorized agent bank are uh, land bank, no? And uh, you can also apply for EFPS or the Electronic Filing and Payment System. So that uh, you can, you can, um, if you want to file reports electronically, you will be able uh, to do that. The form, the registration fee, uh, is usually renewed every year. You no, know? it is renewed as, at the start of the year. So every month you are required to submit reports. In fact, uh, it is a little bit challenging these days because you cannot just declare zero income. Uh, the government expects you or somehow has the idea that the moment you are in business, you usually have income or otherwise you would not survive. No, um, So so if having a business is a part-time business and, and you have other sources of income, like maybe you have a job where your salary is coming from and that really sustains you, and you have a business that you do part-time, and unfortunately, not every month it generates revenue for you, then I guess that's that's a challenge that we have to face now. Because unlike before, if you don't have income, you just file a zero report for not having income for that period. No? Uh, however, if you, if you reach a, search, a situation where you don't really sell that often, like maybe you only sell uh, during you know, special seasons, among others, 
And and if you find those uh, new requirements right now to be a challenge, I think it would be best to reevaluate whether you would want to continue on that arrangement. If you feel that uh, your business is not that uh, how do you call that consistent enough to be able that you will be able to churn monthly income and issue receipts uh, the best way that you might want uh, well, not really the best way but one thing that you might want to explore to is to have partners so that uh, partner with an entity so they can carry your products uh, for you of course it may result to a decrease in income because you're sharing it with another entity but I guess the decreasing income can be can offset the administrative requirements that you need to go through for not having regular income in so far as tax filing, among other things, is concerned, and even expose yourself or subject yourself to audit later on. Uh, since the guideline requires you to have your records intact and be open for audit as the time arises. All right. Uh, I have a question at this point. Um, I will read it now, but if I spot that your question is something that I will address later then uh, I will tell you that I can defer it later, okay? So let me check the first question. Um, okay. Rod asks, what if I am selling online store subscriptions? Are my clients mandated to follow BAR regulation? Considering my company is registered already and my clients just act as distributors. Okay, I will answer that later. And Jesse asks, we are an existing legal corporation. Do we need to register for e-commerce business tax, given the fact that we are already registered as a regular business? Uh, Jesse, uh, if you are already registered as a business, that is it. You know, need to register as an e-commerce business. Because at the end of the day, there is no such thing as an e-commerce business per se. I just referred to this as this one. And my apologies if I have given the wrong impression. Um, technically, what the guideline it only states that if you are engaged in e-commerce business, this is the procedure that you follow. And the procedure is the same procedure as the traditional businesses follow. So meaning, it, BAR wants to imply that even if you're an e-commerce business, you are treated as a normal business, regular business. And therefore, whatever regular businesses are required to do under our existing laws, E-commerce businesses, e-commerce businesses need to comply with the same uh, regulations. Okay, so I hope I'm able to clarify that, and maybe I will need to update my article also to make sure that I do not end up uh, confusing others. Thank you very much, Jesse, for that question. By the way, if you have anything to add or you would like to contribute your insight as well to this discussion, all you need to do is just raise raise your hand or uh, Type something in the chat box that you would like to provide an additional insight. Let me know and I'll be more than happy to uh, turn on your microphone and uh, let you share your perspective as well. Okay? So are we okay with this page? Uh, kindly press that raise your hand button if you're okay. Thank you very much. So let's continue. Um, after securing your registration uh, and paying the fee, the next thing that you need to do is to secure an authority to print. The authority to print allows you to uh, uh, print invoices, receipts, book of accounts for use in business. Um, you know, um, as I think you know already, there was uh, an issue that happened this year where BAR asked businesses to surrender their old booklets or their old receipts. And it is now being replaced with a new receipt system. The old receipt doesn't have an expiration date. And in fact, during that time, when you receive a book, when you receive your books of accounts, you don't have to replace it every year because as long as it is not full, you can just continue uh, filling it up. That was, the, that was the understanding that I got before. Now, what the BAR has done now uh, is that the receipts are now being replaced. And if my understanding is correct, the validation, the validity of an official receipt now is only good for four years. No? Kaya kung totose, medyo marami na mumublema ngayon. And I guess I can say that I am also included on that. No? Um, kasi, like in my case, since I don't issue, um, actually naging active lang ako sa 
sa trainings on a one-on-one level only this year. So this me- that means that all the receipts that I had this time, I hardly use it. So kumbaga parang nakaka one booklet lang yata ako. Well, actually, yung one booklet tumatagal sa akin ng three years, no? Or one booklet aabot lang sa akin ng one year. Or something like that. Since some of my, a lot of my projects are done with other entities where event organizers are the ones handling it rather than me being the one issuing receipts one by one to individuals, no? And I just issue one receipt when the event organizer turns over a sum to me, no? And, and the challenge there is that um when when you look at it uh and then, ma, ma, medyo mabigat na yung requirement ngayon no pero anyway that is the reality of it i guess for first timers who are registering their business for the first time it is really not much of a big deal but for those who have been accustomed to the old system all of these changes can can get a little uh, how do you call that it sends a different hue and sometimes it sends a bit of scare to a lot of entrepreneurs uh, but I guess, uh, I guess, I guess that's the price of computerization. As the revenue office uh, improves with their computerization, it is normal that they will be uh, more efficient as well in tracking all transactions. Therefore, mas madali na nila makikita kung meron kang mga lapses. Kung yung mga lapses before hindi nakikita because of lack of computerization. But as the computerization gets improved, as they are able to process and, and, and really analyze all the data that they had for, for the past decade, um, especially since we started doing e-commerce for the past 13 years, uh, mas nagiging efficient na yung government. Mas nakikita na nila yung nasaan yung mga problem areas. No? But anyway... One of the things that you can do if you have an online store is that you can apply for a computerized accounting system. And one of the components includes an e-invoicing system. And this will allow you to issue an electronic official receipt. So meaning when somebody buys from you, when you deliver the item, instead of attaching an, an, a paper official receipt, you can already issue an electronic uh uh, I you will get uh, how do you call that an uh, electronic uh, official receipt, no? So yun na yung um, difference ngayon. Kaya nga ngayon parang okay. So since the new regulations, we had to start reviewing also how we did things, and uh, to the point that we're also making some changes on our end. Kasi nga parang wow, parang iba na challenging na to. So it's usually we have to review how we do things right now, no? Pero anyway. Uh, nandiyan na tayo, um, it's either, ano lang tayo, we can only move forward and see how we can work and adopt this new process. Because at the end of the day, if everyone is also going to do it right, then I guess it will make it fair to all players and uh, I guess being fair also with government. No? All right, let me review the questions we have. Okay. Uh, may question tayo sa page na to. If you have no more questions uh, on this page, kindly press the raise your hand button. Or if you, if you want to add an insight, kindly type sa questions box and I can unmute your microphone. Okay, thank you very much. So let's continue. Um, we are also required to issue registered invoice or receipt either manually or electronically, for every sale, barter, exchange, or lease of goods and properties, as well as for every sale, barter, or exchange of service. The said invoice or receipt shall confirm to the information requirements prescribed under existing revenue issuances and shall be prepared at least in duplicate, the original to be given to the buyer and the duplicate to be retained by the seller as part of the latter's accounting records. Um, I think dito tayo nagkakaroon ng mga challenges kasi pagdating sa online, uh, admittedly, maraming barter. So, ano ibig sabihin ng barter? So, for example, uh, meron nag-offer sa'yo, sabi niya sa'yo, uh, bibigyan kita ng free web hosting. Ang kapalit, lalagyan kita ng ads uh, sa website mo. no? Ah, maglalagay ako ng ads sa website mo. If you're going to follow this to the letter, then that means that that barter must be accompanied by an official receipt. Uh, kung lalabas na talaga exchange din siya, kailangan may ma-declare na value sa kanya. No? Um, and therefore, it has to 
it it will appear like a sale is is got constituted in the process. So I suggest consulting with your accountant in so far as that is concerned and see how you start valuing also or put premiums on the barter that you issue. Kasi lumalabas, kung susundin mo yan, parang yung mga ex-deal ngayon, pag hindi mo siya nilagyan na accompanying values and you don't declare them as sales or what have you, automatic, parang nagbabiolate ka na ng rule. Parang ganun ang uh, lumalabas ngayon pagdating do sa memorandum circular. So it's best that you consult with your accountant in in relation to uh, barters, no? Now, ang um, invoice and receipt, uh, dapat of course may authority to print yan ng BAR, may expiration date yan. Ah, uh, marami nga nang nagkakaproblema ngayon kasi marami pa ring mga businesses hindi pa nakukuha yung receipts nila. And as of Sept- and in so far as September is concerned, you cannot issue your old receipts anymore. You really, you cannot use them anymore. Pag gumamit ka ng old receipt at binigay mo siya ngayon sa kahit na sinong buyer, uh, magbo-violate ka ng, mag, magpe-penalty ka for issuing an old receipt. No? So, required na ngayon na kailangan gumamit ng mga new receipts. No? Kaya, kung mapapansin nyo, kung may mga binabayaran kayo ngayon at sinasabihan kayo na uh, hindi kagad nila ma-issue yung receipt, more often than not, the reason behind that was uh, BIR has not yet given their authority to print. So, nagahabol pa yung mga tao ng printing ng mga documents nila. No? Okay. Uh, we are also required to withhold required creditable and expanded withholding tax, final tax, tax on compensation of employees and, and other withholding tax. And remit the same to the Bureau at the time or times required, and issue to the concerned payees the necessary certificate of tax withheld. Um, I think nandito rin yung challenge. Like, for instance, ako, may mga situations ako that I have rendered services to people, and when the money gets remitted to me, they deduct taxes. But more often than not, yung accompanying BAR document that states that they have withhold taxes are not given to me. Hanggang sa matapos na yung taon, follow up ka ng follow up, hindi na bibigay sa'yo yung certificate of tax withheld. And uh, one thing I learned, um, you really have to choose the accountant that you're going to deal with. I had a situation where one accountant I dealt in the past said that I can declare additional income uh, that is that can be outside of uh, what what I had declared prior in the months ahead and then, merong, lalo na yung pag may mga professionals na, yan, yung nag, nag, nag-de-declare, nag, supposedly may mga certificate of tax withheld. Pag halimbawa, hindi ka nabigyan ng certificate of tax withheld, gusto mo i-declare, pag wala ka pala certificate of tax withheld, parang i- hard siyang i-declare as an income, no? Uh, then you encounter one accountant saying na uh, you cannot declare that kung hindi mo siya nasama sa books of sales mo and kung hindi ka nabigyan ng certificate of tax withheld, therefore, hindi mo na mapapatunayan that you have rendered that service. So, that's where you really have to be careful as to which accountant do you deal with. Hindi porket sinabihan ka ng accountant na pwede yan, gawan niya ng paraan, o oo ka na lang kagad, maniniwala ka and you would feel relieved. At the end of the day, sometimes it's better to be cautious than sorry. No? Talagang you really have to get one that you can trust who will put your welfare ahead. No? And and uh, and rather than just a quick gain of paying less taxes, and then later on, bigla mo realize, oh, shucks, I have to make bawe, I have to pay penalties, akala ko kasi hindi na kailangan yan, hindi na kasama yan, I was given bad advice. Hindi yun lulusot, no? Pag talaga nagkamali ka, nagkamali ka, you really have to make up for it and pay the penalties and charges that goes along with it. So, nandun yung uh, predicament, no? So, that's why kung ano yung sabihin sa guidelines, kung ano yung sinasabi sa policies na dapat tanggalin, dapat bayaran, kailangan talaga alam mo siya. And ang challenge ngayon, di ba palagi natin sinasabi, ignorance of the law excuses no one. If the revenue office has already circulated that and have published it, and the moment you register a business, it assumes that you know that you will take the effort of knowing the policies you will you will go out of your way and find out what are your responsibilities as an entrepreneur rather than just thinking about the benefits no kumbaga 
kailangan alam natin kung ano yung mga responsibilities natin. Like, and, and like in this case, insofar as payment of taxes is concerned. No? Okay. Um, may mga issues then na sometimes, like if you dealt with individuals and then you are in a situation where um, do you, especially if you paid a small amount, na parang halos good lang siya for transportation. Um, so, minsan nagkakaroon ng issue, like sasabihin nila, ano bang gagawin ko? Kasi I got somebody to help me out. Pero yung binigay kong pera sa kanya is talagang good for transportation. Do I declare that as income or transportation? Um, I think, ikaw na, ikaw na mag-decide. O, kausapin mo na rin account mo. Pwede mo kasi sabihin na, you know, ang babayaran ko lang doon is 500 pesos. That is only good for transportation. Can I just declare that as a transportation expense and bigyan yung personal transportation? Um, I think as long as you can prove it, na talaga namang good siya for transportation, then I guess you can do that. Pero pag halimbawa na overdo mo rin yung transportation mo, pwede ka rin mag subject to audit for that eh, no? So, uh, kaya kailangan doon ka, pag-isipan mo mo siya mabuti. And then, if you are dealing with contractors, then I guess that's where you also have to assess your fees. Kasi baka mamaya, ang liit-liit na nga ng binayad mo, pag kinaltasan mo pa siya ng tax, lalong liliit. So that means, ikaw mismo, you really have to evaluate how much do you pay to people and really make it worth their while. Na to the point naman na baka maagrabyado na sila, wala na silang kikitain, o kaya the amount that they got was not even enough to cover the logistical resources that they need to mount in order to render the services to you. No? So, uh, kaya, kaya we also have to be sensitive no? in so far as how we pay people, knowing also the fact that it is in our obligation to deduct taxes from them. So, one way of doing it is when you negotiate with people, pwede mong gawing um, net of taxes, and then you just start computing kung magkano yun para at least mas maging realistic ka dun sa costing mo uh, insofar as your expenses is concerned and also how you sell your products and services to others. Kasi kung sasabihin mo na, hindi naman ako kumikita dyan, lugi pa ako eh. Mahirap yun. Hindi mo naman pwedeng gawing analogy yun for gover- sa government. Pag sinabi eh, no, kung ngayon kung lugi ka, eh, dapat magbayad ka pa rin ng tax kasi nakakuha ka ng sales. Parang ganun ang thinking, think, nagiging thinking dyan. So, yeah, kailangan pag-aralan mo rin yung price mo. Kasi, hindi porket nagpapakamartir ka na hindi ka kumikita, it escapes you, it it will waive you of your obligation in paying taxes. Parang lumalabas, that's the reality of it. no? Okay, we have uh, questions here. Uh, Rod uh, said that by our experience, first and last booklets were retained by EBIR. I am wondering why. Um, I'm not so sure. Um, sa akin, ano ba nangyari nun sa akin? First and last? Actually, sa akin, hindi ko na, na-experience yung na-retain, no? But I will ask my accountant kung ano yung experience nila dyan. Thank you for the heads up on that, Rod. Um, Yung pa, no? Yung pa ang problem. Pag ikaw, hindi ikaw yung nag-i-issue ng resibo. <laughs> yung, if really somebody else is taking care of it for you, uh, kailangan talaga maging aware ka. Kasi at the end of the day, pag nagkagulo-gulo yan, ikaw pa rin ang liable, eh. Uh, para sa Data Privacy Act, uh, even if you outsource to a virtual assistant and your virtual assistant abuse your data and misuse it, your customers, when they run after you for data privacy violation, hindi yung VA mo ang hahabulin nila. Ikaw ang hahabulin nila. Kasi at the end of the day, Ikaw ang person who is going to be responsible for it. It's not the person that you outsource to. Although you can uh, run after and make your uh, outsourcer liable, but still, it doesn't escape you of the liability kasi in-expect ka na nagkaroon ka ng due diligence. Kaya nga ito yung time na um, marami sa atin ngayon nagkiklean, nagkiklean ang act natin. No? Ano yung mga kulang, inahanap natin, nagkokontakan tayo ng mga dati nating kasama para mahanap kung may mga missing documents tayo, no? Kasi, misa nga, nasubmit mo na, bigla sa sabi, wala ka nasubmit. So, hahanapin mo ngayon lahat ng records mo, no? So, that's that's the challenge now that uh, I think a lot of us are having. Uh, Cheryl said, we still don't have our new receipts. Can we register income to the BIR? Because this is really what is happening. Actually, uh, Cheryl, that's our challenge right now, no? If we don't have, di ba, effective September, we cannot issue our old receipts. So, 
kung may income ka ngayon, paano mo siya madedeclare kung hindi ka nakapag-issue na receipt sa kanya? I guess nung papasok yung invoice. So, pwede mo sigurong gamitin yung invoice mo. Um, or pwedeng, uh, pwede ka naman mag-declare ng income kapos ihabol mo na lang yung OR. In fact, na nakakalungkot eh. Kasi umabot kami sa point na may times na kahit na walang income, uh, for one reason or another, nagde-declare na lang kami kasi nga, <laughs> Ayun na, maiwasan. Maiwasan lang yung situation that you have to explain yourself kung bakit ka zero for the month. No? Para minsan nangyayari yung ganun. No? Um, at least for some of the projects that I uh, I got to handle. Kasi may mga entrepreneurs ako natutulungan. Eh, may mga entrepreneurs na nagpapahinga. Yung nag-online store sila, tapos nirevamp nila yung site nila, hininto mo na nila, so they're not, they're not operating. Tal gusto mo na nilang ayusin, tapos naging victim din sila ng fraud. So, parang nire-review nila yung business nila. And then, all of a sudden, biglang, Janet, may problem ako. We still have to, ano pala, kasi ang daming explanation. I don't want to go through that. So, nag-declare pa, no? So, I hope yun yung mga... Actually, ko to si medyo nalulungkot ako eh. Kasi when we had the memorandum, sir, when we had the briefing last year, we gave our points. We gave our perspective on the proposed memorandum circular. I even wrote a long blog post about it in Digital Filipino and stated ano yung mga kinakatakutan kinakatakutan ng tao o kinakatakutan ko rin no? na baka mamaya biglang maharas yung mga online entrepreneurs and all of a sudden numabas na yung guideline na hindi na siya nagkaroon ng second consultation parang parang hindi, hindi nakapagbigay pa ng mas solid na input and I think that is also the reason why I put out that blog post to explain the entire thing as I understood it. Nilagay ko rin dyan kung nasaan yung problem ko sa kanya. And then, that's also the reason why I'm having this webinar to have a discussion. Is para makita ko rin kung uh, gaya sa inyo, who's attending right now, how do you feel about the guideline? Um, uh, ano yung problems na pwedeng maging, ma-encounter natin sa kanya? And then maybe, I hope that by getting enough inputs, I will be able to revert back and give and update that and express sentiments. At ano pa yung dapat makalibrate in so far as the RMC is concerned? Kung pwede magkaroon pa ng room for calibration, no? Anyway, sige, tuloy na tayo. All right. You also need to pa to file applicable tax returns on or before the due dates. So, may mga due dates tayo, di ba? Meron tayong monthly, meron tayong quarterly, and then meron tayong annually, no? Um, and then, we also have to submit information returns and other compliance reports, such as summary list of sales and purchases, annual alpha list of payees at the time or times required by existing rules and regulations. I think yung mga alpha list, kailangan din siya kapag uh, nagdi-declare, especially kung VAT ka. Kasi di ba, merong uh, input-output VAT, no? Kaya medyo madugo yung accounting yan eh. Kaya, ayun. So, kailangan mas maging uh, diligent tayo sa kanya, no? All right. And you also have to keep your business, uh, you keep you have to keep your books of accounts and other uh, business or accounting records within the time prescribed by law. At ito na yung sinasabi rin, no? That we shall be made available anytime. These businesses, these accounting records, uh, must be available anytime for inspection and verification by duly authorized revenue officer for the purpose of asserting compliance with tax rules and regulations. So, kung umabot ka sa point na hindi maayos yung books of accounts mo, um, I think kung nawala na yung accountant mo before or what have you, Wag niyo nang hintayin na auditing kayo bago niyo ayusin yung books of accounts niyo. You should really make an effort of uh, fixing your books now. Ayusin mo na ano yung mga hindi na prop. Kasi kung tutusin sa ITR naman, I remember, ano ba yun? Yung pwede kang, di ba meron silang one-off yung pwede kang mag-declare na 40% expenses and then may 60% taxes. Um, Pero kung talagang lumalagpas doon, then pwede ka pang mas maging detailed pa. So, kaya kailangan maging very specific ka kung paano yun. Kaya kung maabot ka sa point na hindi mo sinesuelduhan yung sarili mo, eh mukhang kailangan habuli mo na siya, no? Para naman ma-properly credit mo yung income. Kasi kahit na alam mong tama ka, may sasaayos mo naman siya. Kaya lang yung hassle. I remember a friend telling me nakaka na... Usually they are very young and then pero kung to say ruthless sila when it comes to auditing, no? 
So, kaya kailangan, um, I think it's as early as possible, kailangan mas maging maayos tayo kung paano natin i-handle yung books natin. Um, I will try to organize, we're, we're now current, we're currently fixing our, our, our books, no? And kung tutusin, nagpapagawa ako ng template ngayon na pwede kong i-post online na pwedeng gamitin ng mga merchants para para more or less it's a template that can be used kung paano siya gagamitin. Kasi hindi naman lahat nag-iisip na bumili ng mga accounting software. More often than not, we just use Excel um, in preparing our our reports, no among others. Uh, so at least pwede siyang magamit. I remember I had one participant uh, I have one student in the past na sinabi niya, Janet, how do I go about this? Kasi kung tutusin, ang income ko lang online is anywhere from 5,000 to 10,000 pesos. It's not that much. But if I get an accountant at the minimum, parang kahit na under-retainer siya, ang sinisingin na niya kagad sa akin at the minimum was 5,000 pesos per month. So kung yung palang wala na, wala na akong kikitain. Parang, what's the point of being in business? Kung hobby lang naman siya sa akin, tapos all of a sudden, I'm going to be subject to all of these regulations. Ano ba dapat ang gagawin ko? Um, kaya kung tutusin, it made me reflect, kasi I remember in Australia, nung nakapag-stay ako for a few months there, uh, three years ago, um, I remember there, kapag hobby yung business mo, kung tutusin, you can start naman as a hobby. Eh. Pero kapag nag achieve ka na ng volume, then doon na siya ini-start na i-treat as a business. Therefore, mas marami na siyang demands na hinihingi. That includes issuance of receipts. No? So, I guess doon ka, that's where you have to start uh, distinguishing whether what you have is really a hobby or a business. Kung hobby lang siya, then I guess pwedeng yun eh, yung pano, that's what we need to start clarifying. When is an adventure, a hobby, and when is a venture a business? Parang ang nagiging point kasi ng BIR, regardless whether a venture is a hobby is a bi- or a business, at the end of the day, ang point lang nila ay simple lang. May bumili sa'yo, makapagresibo ka. That's it. Kaya yeah, hobby yan kay business, kailangan pa may bumili sa'yo, makapagresibo ka. So, I guess, talagang wala kang choice. Pag-aralan mo na lang talaga yung accounting on your own. Kasi, yun ang requirement eh. Parang, uh, yun na lumalabas na sa regulations natin ngayon na parang nire-require sa ating mga online entrepreneurs. No? Okay. Um, remember that the e-commerce law required, as I said earlier, about neutral tax treatment. So that means existing tax laws and revenue issuances on tax treatment and sale of goods, whether local or international, or services. Uh, is treated as one and the same. There's no special exemption. Well, technically, kung titignan nyo, since walang inisyong regulation ang BIR for the past 13 years insofar as e-commerce is concerned, so marami sa atin talaga naging use na parang hindi siya covered. Parang ganun yung naging impression ng iba nung una, hindi siya covered. And we're operating on that premise. But now that VAR has already given guidelines, wala na tayong choice kundi mag-comply kasi para sinabi na, we, let you, we did not ask you anything for the past 13 years. Parang ngayon lang sila kumilos sa atin. Parang ganun yung situation natin right now. No? So here are the types of business transactions online and what applies. So let's take note of it. First, the first guideline is a uh, focus on online shopping and online retailing, as stated in the guidelines. BAR describes uh, online shopping as and online retailing as those where consumers can directly buy goods or services from a seller over the internet without an intermediary service. So, meaning, for as long as the person can buy from you directly, uh, whether sa Facebook mo yam binibenta o nialagay mo sa mga marketplaces, as long as the consumers can buy from you directly, then automatically online shopping yan or online retailing. An online shop e-store uh, evokes the physical analogy of buying products or services from a brick-and-mortal retailer or shopping center. Ibig sabihin, 
Uh, kahit na wala kang pwesto, as long as people can buy from you online, whether it's a product or a service, automatically, ang category mo ay online uh, shopping. Now, meron din siya tiyatawag na, ngayon, uh, the guideline recognizes that buyers can purchase from you in three ways. Pwede siya magbayad sa'yo through credit card, uh, through bank deposit, or through cash. COD or pipikapin niya sa'yo yung product or item. So, ito ang sinasabi ni BAR as far as that policy is concerned. Number one, kapag ang buyer, pag yung bumili sa'yo, nagbayad through credit card, as an online seller, you are required to do three things. Number one, kailangan mag-issue ka ng BAR registered invoice or official receipt for the full amount of sale to the buyer. Second, kailangan mag-issue ka ng acknowledgement receipt to the credit card company for the amount received. And then, you have to pay the commission of the credit card company net of 10% expanded withholding tax. Actually, dito ako na confused kasi uh, when you think about it, um, di ba ang nangyayari? Si credit card company, siya yung nakakatanggap ng payment in behalf of us, no? Sila yung tumatanggap ng payment. So sila kung tutuusin yung nagre-remit ng payment sa merchant rather than the merchant remitting payment to the credit card company. So dito medyo na-challenge ako on this one. Ah, uh, para lumabas niyon kapag yung yung credit card company, ah, uh, yung commission nila o yung service fee nila Let's say, sinabi nila sa'yo, 3% yung china-charge nila. So, ibig sabihin, yung 3% nila, hindi nila pwedeng kunin yung 3% ng buo. Kailangan, charge pa sila ng 10% of withholding tax. So, dito, medyo nagkaroon na ng challenge pagdating doon sa kanyang implementation. So, it is best that you talk to your payment gateway uh, about this one kasi... Uh, yung local payment gateway mo, kailangan aware siya na kailangan pa nag-receive siya, kailangan tanggalan niya ng 10% because as far as this requirement is concerned, kailangan mo siyang tanggalan ng 10% expanded withholding tax. So, nakita niyo yung, nakita niyo kagad yung challenge um, insofar as this letter C is uh, concerned. No? And then the buyer or the customer uh, yung bumibili, required siya to receive the payment confirmation under the name of the merchant for the purchase price charged by the credit card company. At kailangan makatinggap din siya ng invoice from the merchant upon delivery of the goods. So, kailangan uh, makatanggap ka ng payment confirmation at kailangan makatanggap ka ng OR kung ikaw yung bumili. Kung ikaw naman yung tumanggap ng bayad, kailangan mag-issue ka ng OR, mag-issue ka ng acknowledgement receipt sa credit card company at kailangan, yung commission ng credit card company, yung makukuha nila, kailangan net ng 10% expanded withholding tax. Na lumalabas, ikaw magbabayad ng expanded withholding tax niya. So, talk to your, if you are accepting credit cards, your payment gateway is local, you have to talk to your payment gateway in so far as letter C is concerned. No? Kasi, yan yung nakalagay dyan. Unfortunately, this policy is already in effect. No? Kaya, yun yung uh, kailangan mas maklaro ng maigi. No? Alright. Um, if the buyer's payment is through the banks, yung merchant, kailangan niyang mag-issue ng OR at mag-issue ng acknowledgement receipt for the amount received. No? So, ibig sabihin, um, well, ang pinaka-acknowledgement receipt mo na, I think, is the is the dip- is the ano, statement yung nasa bank. Kasi di ba, pag nag-check ka sa online banking, makikita mo na eh na natanggap mo yung amount. Kaya medyo weird sa akin yung mag-i-issue ka pa ng acknowledgement receipt to the bank kasi pumasok lang naman siya sa iyo as bank deposit. So, technically, makikita mo lang siya dun sa sa ano mo, sa bank report mo. So, yan, kung tutusin, medyo ano ko, ik- one, this is one of the things that we will clarify yung letter B. Kasi pumasok na yun sa account mo eh. So, ba't ka pa mag-issue ng acknowledgement receipt dun sa bank? Eh, pumasok lang naman siya sa bank account mo at nakikita mo siya dun sa online banking statement mo. ba kasi pag online banking, uh, we ask the the payer 
to give us a copy of the validated deposit slip. Tapos binabangga mo lang siya dun eh. No? So, yun yung dapat i-clarify. Kung talagang maghahanap siya na maghahanap ng documents. No? Okay. Um, Rosella asks, if the company's BAR certificate of registration does not include withholding tax on compensation of employees, that, does that exempt the company from withholding? Um, Rosella, I think um, at the end of the day, from my understanding, and it is best to consult an accountant on this one, uh, the moment you hire a person and you deduct taxes from that person, then you are required to pay their taxes. Now, kung halimbawang may agreement ka dun sa person working for you na siya ang maaring mag-handle nun o mag-take care nun, depende sa usapan nyo, then you have to make sure na it is covered in writing. Kasi parang at the end of the day, um, required ka na when people work for you, kailangan uh, kinakaltasan mo sila ng tax. Unless you don't have an employee-employer uh, relationship with them or uh, below sila sa income level to the point na hindi sila qualified na magbayad ng tax. No? Pero it's best to consult your uh, accountant uh, in that area. If you notice, I'm speaking slowly kasi ayoko magkamali on that. And uh, ayoko rin magsabi ng bagay na maaring mali yung masabi ko. No? So, take it with a grain of salt yung pagdating dyan sa bagay na yan. It's best to really consult. No? Okay, meron na grace ng hand at siya I see Philips. Philips, I'm going to unmute your microphone. Uh, I will ask you to kindly introduce yourself and we very much appreciate your insight into this discussion. Okay? Hold on. Hi, Philips. Hi, Sam. Yeah, thanks. Yes. Yes, Um. this is about my question, the Sulit. Ah, Philips, can you introduce yourself to everyone first? Ah, yeah. Hi, this is Philips. Um, I worked in Multiply uh, before it closed, okay. and I'm now with Zen. Okay. Uh, and, and we're also doing OKOK.com, a deal site. Yes. And we're also sort of um, going to launch a marketplace in, in a month. So a so, um, couple of things. It's more of like, I think my first question, Janet, is just like Sulit. It's a gray area right now. Is Sulit considered the intermediary service? Intermediary service um, in this case, I think uh, we will go to the intermediary part later on. Um, I think uh, Sulit is uh, intermediary in a sense that because they have a platform where people can post content. However. Since Sulit does not process any payment in behalf of the merchant or of the buyer, then what is happening in the site is what we call a C2C or a consumer-to-consumer -consumer transaction. A B2B or a B2C transaction may be occurring, but it is not between Sulit and the buyer. It is among the people who have posted products in the marketplace. So meaning, let's say if I post a listing on Sulit, let's say I say I'm selling a book. And then you you are one of the you're a Sulit member also. And then you got in touch with me and say, "I Janet, I want to buy a copy of that book." Even though we are both in Sulit, that transaction is between us. So therefore, whatever what governs our transaction is a under if under this guideline is concerned, I am functioning as an online merchant because you were able to buy the product still directly from me. And and my ob and the obligations that I have, uh, what your expectations, any obligation will only come from me and not from the marketplace. Janet, is it okay to ask more questions? Sure, sure go ahead. Yeah. So um, you we mentioned the credit card company need to withhold ten percent. Yes. So, but the issue like we talked to BD on BPI and they're still blank about it. So because what they do is they just remit, let's say 
they collected 10,000, they remit already their, their fees, which are around 3 to 4%. Mm-hmm. And now the, the merchant cannot withhold the 10%. So, so it's a gray area right now. Yeah, actually, that's one of the things that I have to send a clarification to. Uh, but we have an area later on about the credit cards in the banks. But I think what you can do is uh, talk to the bank and show the RMC. And with the RMC, what, what I'm seeing there is that if we're going to adjust based on what is stated in the RMC, that means that when the when BAR uh, sends you your share, which is instead of just net of 3%, because that is their share, they still have to add the 10%. That they that they are supposed to pay for as taxes and add that to you unless they're saying uh, our share is net of tax therefore you have to take care of our tax that is not part of our fees or that that what we're getting from you is the net of fees so you now have to revisit that guideline because in so far as letter C is concerned of what was indicated earlier um, it seems it clearly stated that we have to pay the commission of the credit card. And and yeah. we have no choice, and that is indicated here. Because even though we we can negotiate it, um, definitely we can we can write to the BAR and ask for further clarification on this one. But until BAR issues a clarification on this area, this this provision is in effect. So so you now have to go back to all of your transactions where you have not deducted ten percent expanded withholding tax. And start charging them now and say, this is what is there. That means all this time, we don't want to get audited and say that we haven't been pay- we haven't been withholding you taxes and vice versa. Pareho naman pwede in trouble eh. Okay, two more quick questions. Again, majority of the sellers, they don't have access to credit card, but they use PayPal. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know for a fact, since PayPal is a foreign entity, uh, it's thirty per two percent withholding tax. Would did you have an idea if there's an issue if the seller you know just doesn't claim PayPal expense as an expense, would there be an issue on that? Because like I, I asked is, yes. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Ah, yeah, because like PayPal is a foreign entity, you know they're they're not gonna adjust based on Philippine laws, and so on. So do we you know gross up the withholding tax, which is thirty two percent? Okay. Because it's a foreign end, or okay. can we just not claim it? It's a small expense, relatively. Yes. Yeah, it's still big. Three point four percent plus fifteen pesos. Then you cross it up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, so, is it advisable to just not claim it as an expense, or we just need to still do the withholding tax expanded? Oh, I think. Siguro mangyayari na lang don. Uh, de- depending on how you do it, no. What others do when. When they collect through PayPal and then they issue an official receipt, uh, di ba ako dalasa pag nag na process na yung PayPal transaction, net na siya, di ba? Nakakalpas na yung fees niya, di ba? So let's say nagbay- may nagbayad sa'yo ng 1.5, ang magre-reflect na lang sa'yo 1 for something kasi PayPal already deducted their fees, di ba? So what others do, um, kinakausap nila yung buyer at sasabihin nila doon sa buyer, ito na lang yung natanggap namin net. So, they issue an receipt, they issue, they issue an receipt based on the net that they got rather than from the gross. So, I guess, uh-huh. parang lumabas, parang, I don't know, parang mali yata yung term na discount. Hindi naman discount, pero it's like just being realistic and reason out with the consumer na... I want to I want to issue a receipt for this transaction kaya lang since PayPal already deducted fees from me is it okay if I declare net rather than gross So that is one way I guess that is a one way of going about it kung medyo you find it complicated kung medyo complicated kung paano natin i-declare yung mga PayPal fees pa no um, that is what I saw how others do it um, kung gagawin mo naman siyang gross I guess what others do parang they just treat PayPal like a normal channel without giving any special declaration uh, for them sa books. Parang ang treatment sa kanya is like cash. Parang it's like a sale in cash insofar as the books of accounts is concerned. Kasi kung ide-declare mo pa siya as a credit card company, parang ang dami mong aayusin sa papers mo. So... Yeah, thank, thank yeah. you for that, Janet. That's Uh-oh. a great, great idea. Uh-oh. Um, and I hope, one is, and um, I hope and I hope it doesn't sound illegal either. <laughs> I hope it's not illegal sounding noon. 
I guess it's more just at the end of the day you're you're still declaring it. Kaya lang ano nangyayari nga lang uh, basta basta wag na lang maging complicated yung process book. You just declare it as a straight cash out sale. Ang problem lang kasi yeah. dun sa credit card, may paper malinaw yung paper trail kasi dun sa credit card since the entities are all local. Uh, but just to before before we move before we move on up outside of PayPal. Uh, I had a meeting before with some of with the with entities like eBay and PayPal, and one of the one of the discussions that we had is uh, tax, no, this very issue, and uh, and asking what 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 kind of um, and I had a mer- meetings also with other local merchants who attended the BAR hearing at that time, and uh, at that time we were expecting to say that this dra- that this regulation will come out again as draft where we can give our inputs. Kaso hindi ganun yung nangyari. Biglang dumabas na siya ngayon as a guideline. So, I guess we just have to review kung paano tayo mag adjust following accounting principles. Definitely, we don't want the e-commerce sector uh, to appear like it is a favored sector and marginalizing all other sectors who are paying taxes this way. So, it's just a matter of adjusting on our end. Kasi this, the process that, that is being asked of now is is the process that everyone is doing in the offline world. No? Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Um, I didn't type this. Because when you issue an official receipt and then you do the list of sales, mm-hmm. one of the things required by VAR is you need to put the TIN number of the mm-hmm. buyer. Mm-hmm. And then, like, like experience in okok.com, is some of the buyers don't have TIN number at all because they're buying it for their personal use. Mm-hmm. So, ah. so that's the issue. Like let's say you have you know a, a, a hundred transactions a day, a hundred buyers a day, and they don't have TIN numbers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we ask around. So that's it's more of I think before it's not a concern because um, like for a deal site, they they issue the official receipt to the merchant. Like they get merchants to sell items and so on, so they become a commission based. But when I when we read the RMC, it says that since you accept the payment, uh, if since you accept the payment and you ship the item and so on, you are the principal seller and you need to issue the invoice directly to the buyer and not the merchant. Um, so the, the concern right now is yes. Hindi. Yes. Uh, may nabasa yes. ako dyan. No, hindi ganun. Numalabas, mag-iiwan siya ng booklet sa'yo. Okay. Unless, unless, merchant ka. Di ba? Kaya may distinction siya dyan. O sige, mamaya, pag-usapan natin yun. Nasa uh, okay. next part yun. So, okay. Pero again, it's, it's more of, if you issue ORs kasi, even for individual, one-on-one seller, di ba? Mm-hmm. Kailangan ng TIN number eh. Mm-hmm. On a per with, with the new Kim Hinares regulation and so on. Yeah. I think the old one actually has a TIN number before. Kaya lang parang, uh, I, I have to admit that uh, in the past, parang hindi siya nagiging requirement, especially if the buyer is an individual or hindi Correct. ka covered ng VAT. Parang wala yung pressure na yun kung hindi ka covered ng VAT. But, uh, but right now, really, yeah, ngayon dumalabas ibang iba na, no? Talagang mas mas detailed yung requirements. Talagang re- they're really trying to track now whatever you're buying and whatever you're uh, on, even on the part of the buyers, whatever they have been buying, no? Tiyak track na rin siya. Meeting na ko di declare ba siya properly as an expense. So kasi parang dumalabas ngayon, kung mag-declare ka sa books mo that you have paid for this as an expense, you check nila yung kabila kung pumasok ba yun as an income. Parang ganun yun, parang ganun eventually. Yes, that's correct. Mangyayari, may bi-directional it, 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 traceability the na. It's the as a, yeah, for the VAT. Oo. So, for the input-output VAT, the TIN yes. number, they, they cross-reference it. Oo. So, I guess, pag, I guess, it still applies siguro kapag individuals yung bumibili. Pero kung sasabihin nila na, na, Pero kasi di mo rin masabi, baka mamaya yung mga individuals na bumibili sa atin, ginagamit din nila for business. Therefore, di require nila yon as a as a ni-reimburse nila. So, I guess what what you can do um, for now, well, pero best to consult your accountant. no Pero if I were in your shoes, uh, ang gagawin ko siguro, dun sa sales transaction ko, maglalagi ako ng field for VAT, and, uh, for TIN, and I will indicate that if you're going to use this purchase as a reimbursement for your company expenses 
or for your expenses for tax reporting purposes, please indicate your team. So, para at least malinaw uh, kung bakit mo hinihingi yung uh, team nila para hindi yung para ang magiging dating lang ay kinokollect mo na lang siya for the sake of it. O kaya, you just really add it to be to play safe and you can just indicate for BAR compliance. Although, yun nga lang, nakakatakot kasi may baka, baka maka-decrease siya sa mga buyers. Baka, kasi may mga buyers na although wala namang issue, pero the mere fact that they're sharing their TIN is already scary. Kasi even on the data privacy law, the TIN is personal information and must be protected. So it requires uh, a bigger accountability on the part of the um, on the part of the people who gets to hold of other people's TIN numbers. No? Pero let me review that further and get back to you. Yeah. Uh, one one last question because then we do for let's say big multinationals we do their pick and pack mm -hmm. we do the delivery we do the cash and delivery so we collect and we charge commission and so on mm -hmm. so send is not considered an intermediary right uh, we just need to prove you are because, a, like there's so many things there are there's a classification for freight forwarding logistics meron nakalagay diyan sige we will get to that later uh mas clarify natin okay. siya yeah, th thanks, Janet. Yeah, okay. it's, it's more of like we're, we're not an ordinary logistics team because we also do it's via the internet. Eh. People do it via the send website. We do the even we do the packing in behalf of the merchant. So, uh -huh. like the merchant sort of just you know, uh, so it's a gray area right now when we uh, even consult a, a tax lawyer. Okay, at this point. Sige, sige. I-clarify so, natin, that... i-clarify natin siya later, especially on your service okay. where you collect in behalf of the merchant. So, i-clarify ko siya later. Charge commission too. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Sige. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, i-mute ko lang si uh Philips. Thank you very much, Philips. Those are great uh questions. And then do we have uh questions or input from others? Okay, let me just read the questions. Um Jesse asks, please include a calendar of due dates for paying filing taxes in your post. Yes, Jesse, that's a great input. I will add that for you. <laughs> I think that is important, no? Kasi I must admit, kahit ako, nahihirapan ako i-navigate yung BAR website. Parang unang tingin ko pala sa kanya, nakakatakot na siya, eh. <laughs> I don't know, ha? I have that feeling. Ha? I don't know about you, ha? but for me, whenever I get to the BAR website, parang creepy kagad siya sa akin. <laughs> so, parang hindi siya, parang ano, parang napaka-authority na parang nakaka nakakatakot siya. Anyway, uh, uh, Philip said, Janet, Sulit then is not considered intermediary service since buyers buy directly from seller. Money does not go to Sulit. That is right, uh, Philip. Kasi ang, ang definition kasi ng intermediary dun sa regulation is that one way or the other, um, the payment uh, courses through them. no, um, and uh, Or the, the pickup uh, courses through them. So mamaya, masiklarify natin siya when we get to that part. Uh, what about PayPal, foreign entity, 32% withholding tax based on feedback from lawyer? Um, I think yun yung challenge natin. Uh, since wala pa tayong clear regulation, uh, at least no, it's not clear kung paano natin gagawin. Paano natin i-impose yung 32% withholding tax sa PayPal since they are a foreign entity? Pag pinilit na, parang, parang ang hirap yun eh. Kasi how do you tell them? Kasi diba, they remit money to us on a net basis. So... Kaya ang ginagawa ko na lang para siguro hindi na magulo, uh, yun, basta declare ko na lang siya parang cash sale. And kasi kung nasabihin ko kay PayPal, PayPal, you have to pay this, eh baka mamaya hindi na mag-offer si PayPal sa Philippines nga. Kawawa naman tayo mga online entrepreneurs who sell through PayPal. No? Um, I'm, Jesse said, uh, I'm not too knowledgeable about taxation but isn't expanded with holding tax 1% one, 1 only. Um, I think from my from my understanding, it's Jesse based on the guideline they indicated ten percent. Uh, if I recall correctly, uh, withholding tax. Um, paano ba yon? I remember. So bakit kasi sometimes we confuse na ano yung value added tax sa withholding tax. Pero in this case, nilagay nila ten percent pa rin eh. Uh, parang uh, yun yun nilagay nilang cry uh, dun sa guideline. But let me let me get back to you on that and check. No. 
Philip said, credit card company remits money to merchant net of total commission. Merchant will not be able to withhold the 10%. Yes, Philip, that is the problem. Kasi di ba lumalabas, when the merchant remits the money to us, they just call us their commission. And they give us the net. Rather than the other way around, na tayo yung nagbibigay na amount dun sa credit card. So parang medyo magulo nga kung paano natin sila kakaltasan ng tax, no? Uh, so ibig sabihin, kailangan mag-self-deduct sila ng tax, tapos yung i-remit nila sa atin, dun nakapatong yung tax. And then tayo, ibabayad natin yung tax nila. Parang ganun yung lumalabas, no? So anyway, we can clarify that further. Um, uh, Tiger get gave a reply kay Rosella. Rosella, yung question mo kanina about if your company registration does not include withholding tax on compensation of employees, does that exempt you from withholding? Uh, it seems you have to apply for an update to include that. Okay? Sige. And then, uh, Phillips mentioned about 15% for consultant, 32% for foreign entity, 1% for goods, and 2% for services, and so on. So I guess we just have to check kung ano yung basis ng 10% expanded withholding tax for the commission of credit card companies para ma-clarify natin yan further. No? Kasi I also expect na it should be a standard rate. In fact, Phillips, yung consultant, I remember before, uh, ano yan eh? nung pag yung 15% ah yun yung pag directly deducted from pay pero if you're if you're issuing receipts para lumabas basta mag, magbabayad ka based on your receipt kasi sabi mo naman i-receiveo mo naman ikaw na magbabayad ng taxes rather than nagdodoble siya so yun yung mga kailangan pa i-clarify with DAR kung paano ito no para at least mas mapaliwanag pang maayos uh, as we do our update on the site okay who Napagod ako dun ah. <laughs> Alright. Sige. So, natapos na tayo dun sa if buyer's payment is through banks. Again, we have to issue, I will have to clarify with letter B kasi lumalabas the buyer has to issue acknowledgement receipt uh, to the bank for the amount received. para medyo weird sa akin yun kasi we don't really issue acknowledgement receipt to the bank. So, I don't know how are we going to do this o kung paano Ano ba siya? Talaga bang i-check siya? Paano paano mo siya i-check, no? Ano 'yun? Parang oh, nakatanggap ako ng uh, uh, does that mean that all payments will be tagged, no? So, 'yun, medyo kailangan i-clarify 'yan, no? All right. Uh letter C. If the buyer's uh payment is uh, cash on delivery or in the office of the merchant on sale of goods for pickup by the customer. The online merchant is required to issue electronically or manually the BAR registered invoice or OR for the full amount of sale of the buyer. So, ibig sabihin, basta pinikap sa'yo, uh, kailangan mag-OR ka. Yan, yun yung uh, point doon. And then, pag cash on delivery, the customer naman, kailangan pag pickup pag pick up niya ng product, bigay niya yung produkto, kailangan makakuha siya ng OR. Kailangan mag-expect siya ng OR. That is what the guideline is uh, saying. So, the way I noticed, the way the BAR RMC was written, is that ginawa niyang not only ano yung obligation ng merchant sa customer, hindi din dito na ano yung obligation ng customer. Parang obligation ng customer na kailangan tumanggap ng OR. Parang ganun yung uh, naka-indicate ngayon sa RMC. Kailangan, kailangan kumuha siya ng OR. No? Okay, let's talk about online intermediary service. In the guideline, an online intermediary service is a third party that offers intermediation services between two trading parties. So, nag a siya as a conduit for goods and services from from being offered by a supplier to a customer at nakakakuha siya ng commission. So, doon pumapasok yung question ni Philips kanina. So, halimbawa, kagaya ni Sulit, may mga nagbebenta doon sa website niya, nagbebentahan yung buyer at customer. But since hindi siya commission for any sale, hindi pa rin siya online intermediary. Pero the moment na kumuha siya ng commission, then online intermediary na siya. So, if, let's say, uh, a now, kung ang question natin is, what if there is a courier and the courier now started packing for the merchants and then started uh, delivering in behalf of the merchant 
And instead of just having a service fee, uh, meron siyang commission for the transaction. Um, then, ang tanong doon is, uh, online intermediary ba siya? I guess it depends on how the buyer discovered the merchant. If the buyer purchased the product from the merchant, uh, through the intermediary's website, then pwede mo sabihin talaga na naka-intermediary na yung, naka-intermediary na yung accountability. Pero if the pack and, eh, but if the commission and the courier service happens in the background, rather than something that is transparent to the customer, then pwede maging disputable pa kung ano siya, kung uh, intermediary siya. So I guess it depends kung paano yung interface niya with the customer. For example, Let's say affiliate ako. I created a website. Uh, I I start. I decided I wanted to sell roses online. Pero wala naman akong rose farm. Ang ginawa ko, I talked to a popular website in the Philippines who sells roses. At dahil may affiliate program siya, sabi ko, can I create a website selling roses? But I want you to fulfill the delivery of all the roses that I will get as orders. So, siya yung, dahil sa kanya kukunin yung roses, siya yung magpapak, siya yung magde-deliver. And, um, pwedeng, pwedeng, ang, pwedeng ang pati yung payment gateway, kanya eh, depende eh, no? Um, pero, as far as the customer is concerned, ako yung liable sa kanya. So, ang ini-expect niyang receipt, galing pa rin sa akin, no? And, uh, rather than, rather than coming from the affiliate where I get the roses from. No? So, so I guess depende kung paano yung gagawing arrangement. But at the end of the day, it has to be clear kung sino yung ka-interface ni customer. Is it, the, cost, is it the, custom, the merchant itself or is it the intermediary? No? So relationship between the intermediary and the merchant shall that be of a principal or agent which shall be governed of their agreement, including but not limited to the amount of commission and how they will transmit the same. So, ibig sabihin, principal and agent and relationship at kailangan merong agreement na naka-indicate doon yung commission at kung ano-ano pa ang terms. So, if a buyer buys from an intermediary service at nagbayad siya through credit cards and banks, kailangan si online intermediary makakapag-issue siya ng acknowledgement receipt OR for buyers to claim the good or the service. Uh, in this case, the merchant acting as the principal shall assign a number of pads of such receipt to the intermediary. So, ibig sabihin, my understanding here is that si merchant mag-iiwan siya ng resibo kay uh, online intermediary para i-issue niya yung uh, OR ni merchant. No? And ensure that the merchant delivers the goods to the buyers with the accompanying invoice or merchant performs the purchase service and issue the OR to merchant for the full amount of the agreed commission and reflecting therein the amount withheld by the merchant. So, ibig sabihin, kung may commission si intermediary, kailangan si merchant makakapag-issue rin ng OR kay intermediary for that service. Ngayon, an online intermediary can also become a merchant or, or retailer. If they control the collection of buyer's payment and thereafter receives commission from the merchant or retailer. And when the intermediary markets multiple products for its own account, consider retailer or merchandiser as to the said products. So, ibig sabihin, kapag si intermediary, uh, siya yung nagko-control ng collection ng buyer's payment at nakakakuha siya ng commission, then pwede siyang maging classified as merchant or retailer. So, ibig sabihin, pwede siya pa rin yung nag-receibo, tapos nire-deduct niya ng amount, si uh, nire-deduct niya yung commission niya bago niya ita-turn over kay merchant. Alright? And then, um, if paid through uh, credit card, they, can, they should be able to issue electronically the invoice. Um, for the full amount of sale to the buyer, if, if kung acknowledgement received to the credit card company for the amount received, and pay the commission of credit card company net of 10% expanded withholding tax. And they should remit the balance to the merchant retailer net of the agreed markup commission um, 
again, uh, removing the 10% expanded withholding tax. Okay? So, kaya kung on the intermediary ka, marami kang binibenta, uh, then kailangan, ikaw na ang, ikaw na ang nag-i-issue ng OR rather than the merchant. Hindi kagaya doon sa kanina na kung intermediary ka lang talaga, nasa sa'yo yung OR ng merchant at ikaw ang nag-i-issue ng OR in behalf of the merchant. No? Or pinapadala sa'yo ng merchant yung OR na i-issue doon sa customer. If pay through banks, uh, again, you should issue the invoice or OR for the full amount of sale to the buyer. Issue ka ng acknowledgement receipt. And when you remit the amount to the merchant, net of the commission, you should also deduct the 10% expanded withholding tax. So, yun ang bilagay dito. Um, siguro, yung before, yung original na EWT table, wala tong 10% na to. So, I guess you can say that this is a new entry in the EWT covering, uh, well, you can say covering e-commerce. So, kung wala to dun sa old na EWT table, indicating that this deduction exists, then with this guideline, it creates that new form of uh, deduction. And so online intermediary sellers, if they are paid by cash on delivery or in the office of the merchant, the online intermediary or sellers are required to get the OR from the merchant before delivering the goods and to issue it for the full sale of the amount and issue the OR for the amount of commission received. Okay, so let us review any questions. Um, Gray said, I once bought a product uh, from Lazada and since the product was just couriered by a, was just delivered by a courier service and no OR was issued, the product I bought was a home appliance. So I returned the product for fear of no uh, warranted issue on my item. Uh, Grace, you, what you can do in this case, you can uh, go back to your um, electronic receipt that was, um, that was uh, how do you call that, that was given to you when the purchase was made. Uh, it is possible that what Lazada has done is they have given you an electronic receipt. And when they deliver the item to you, what they gave you is an acknowledgement receipt. Uh, usually, the warranty is um, given separately. When you get an item, usually uh, what is included in it is a warranty card that you usually need to fill that you usually need to fill up and send it back in order for your warranty to be properly recorded. No, uh, but at the end of the day, if it's indicated in the website that you are covered by warranty then that means that the payment that you have made online might, might have been as good as an official receipt already, uh, assuming that uh, Lazada has a permit for issuing electronic official receipt. No? So, ang pag-deliver sa'yo, ang binibigay nyo lang sa'yo yung acknowledgement receipt for the delivery of the item. Uh, Grace mentioned, what if the payment was uh, COD? Ah, kung COD ang payment, then, then it is important that the courier must carry the official receipt with them. If they did not carry the official receipt with them, then you have to question um, whether is that the fault of the courier or is that the fault of Lazada? Kasi you don't know eh, baka malay mo. Malay mo, baka may... May OR talaga yun in the first place, hindi lang pinresent ng courier, di ba? So, hindi mo masabi eh. So, what you can do, uh, pwede, inform, pwede siguro nung hindi mo tinuloy yung sale, you could have in, pwede mo nasabihan si Lazada na, I did not process the payment because your courier did not bring OR. Kasi pwede possible na naiwan ni courier yung OR. No? I don't think, um, I think on both part of the courier and the, uh, and the service provider uh, or the, the website owner, I'm sure it's part of their regulations na kailangan may, merong may dalang OR. Kasi kung hindi, eh di pwede i-refute na that the delivery was never made. Di ba? Kasi kung wala kang OR na pinanghahawakan, um, anong, proof, anong proof na nagbayad ka? Di ba? One party can say that you did not pay because wala naman paper-based na OR. No? Okay. 
Um, now, Phillips mentioned that uh, send only gives acknowledgement receipt. Uh, in some cases, if the product is goods in form, then pwede talagang acknowledgement receipt yung ipapareceive sa merchant and then the OR can be shipped separately or unless the OR was already given electronically, kung electronic yung receipt. No? Richard said, paano makakuha ng electronic OR sa BAR? Uh, Richard, merong application, yung one of the links that I gave there in the guidelines, meron doong RMC, yung pag nag-authority to print ka, merong portion doon na pwede ka rin mag-apply ng electronic invoicing. Then that's the, that's the time na pag ma-fill up mo, ma-meet mo yung requirements, at mapacheck mo rin yung system mo, then pwede makapag-issue ka ng electronic OR. Kasi ganun din siya eh, bibigyan ka ng series number at itutrack din siya. Uh, para ma-monitor din yung uh, sales mo no? o yung issuance mo ng official receipts. Kaya kailangan pag sinetap mo siya within your system, ayos siya kasi di ba, minsan nagkakaroon ng cancellation ng OR. Like in the case nung, kung, alibawa, let's say yung case ni Grace, let's say nagbayad siya, in-issuance siya ng OR and then, for example lang, hypothetical, na issuean siya ng OR, nagbayad talaga siya, and then nakita niya yung item, di niya gusto, ni-refund niya, o kinansel niya yung transaction, o nag-avail siya ng 30-day money-back guarantee. So, ibig sabihin kailangan i-void yung OR na yun. Kasi, hindi na kung, ano eh, na-cancel yung sale, voided siya. No? So, yun, gusto kong, pwede din natin siguro makita kung paano mo ma-perform yung process ng pag-void ng sale, especially kung nag-offer ka ng money-back guarantee, or uh, returns kung hindi satisf satisfied yung customer. So, how how will you reflect that on your uh, books or yung sa transaction? No? Um, Richard said, kailangan ba magparegister pa sa BAR? Uh, technically, Richard, ang principle is that whatever you sell online, whether product or service, kailangan nakakapag-issue ka ng resibo. So, because of that requirement, uh, and sometimes, kahit di kayo required ng BAR, eh, yung customer mo mismo magde-demand ng resibo sa'yo. Uh, to the point that some will not even want to deal with you kung hindi ka makakapag-issue ng resibo. So, in that case, then dapat talaga mag-register. Um, Philips, said, we clarified with the big merchants and they don't issue official receipt or invoice, whether manual or electronic. Um, I cannot, uh, I'm not so sure, uh, Philips, on how can I uh, react to that kasi I cannot, di ko, ma, di ko mako confirm no? Pero technically, whatever sales is generated, um, a receipt is necessary. So, kung hindi sila nag issue ng receipt, then magkakaroon talaga ng issue. Uh, Jovi said, we have a web client in Dumaguete asking for the copies of ORs. Who will issue, who will shoulder the cost of sending the ORs? Let's say LBC. Or will the scan, then email copy of OR will suffice? Alam mo, Jovi, I have that situation before. Um, yung, let's say, yung humihingi sila ng copy ng OR, so sabi mo, okay, I can take, kasi parang hindi lang mahintay na sa event na uh, let's say, pupunta ka na Cebu next week. So sabi mo, I will give you the OR pagpunta ko dyan sa Cebu next week kasi next week yung training sa Cebu. Pero sabi, no, we cannot wait for that eh. We really need it now. So, o oh, sige, can I take a photo of it and then uh, para lang may ma-present ka. Uh, yung iba papayag, pero they still want you to send the physical piece of paper um, when you look at the e-commerce law or Republic Act 8792, yung paper at saka electronic, they are given equivalent uh, weight. Pero I guess for the part of these people, talagang it's really more of para wala na lang issue sa accounting kasi makulit yung mga taga-accounting eh. At saka madalas kung sino yung person na perform ng transaction, parang nagiging part yung accountability nila kung hindi nila makukuha, ididedact yun sa kanila. So kaya minsan nangungulit sila. So, kapag ganun yung case, then, um, yeah, you, I guess, if the service is availed of electronically and, and payment is made electronically, 
pero you are required to issue OR, then you really have no choice but to career the OR. If you want to be able to issue electronic OR, then I guess you really have to apply for permit for electronic OR, to be sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, Richard asked, may law ba dyan sa online store? Uh, wala namang law na covered per se. Kasi at the end of the day, Richard, all, all existing online stores are treated the same as physical stores. Kasi meron tayong tiyatawag na neutral uh, tax treatment. No? And then, uh, Rod discuss. Ah, okay. Rod I think what I will do is I'm going to upload my I'm going to upload this webinar and then you can also review it later. And then I will also update my article and based on the feedback that I got uh, from our discussion at nakikita ko na rin ko ano yung mga problematic na areas. I will also update my article and highlight the problematic areas that we might need to have uh, a clarification kung paano siya may implement, no? All right. So let's now uh, talk about online advertisement and uh, classified ads. Um, in so far as the guideline is concerned, online advertisement is considered as a form of promotion that uses the internet to deliver marketing messages to attract the customer. So what whatever that form of promotion is, no, basta as long as it is promotion, then it is classified as online advertising. So when you isipin na online advertising Basta may ads lang. So, let's say, nagpa-plug sa Facebook, o nagpa-plug sa Twitter, or nagpa-blog, parang ganun. Technically, uh, pumapasok siya under online advertisement or classified ads. No? So, the person who's advertising uh, is obliged uh, kung sino yung nagpa-perform ng ads, no? The advertising entity is obliged to issue electronically or manually the BIROR to the merchant or retailer for the full amount of the advertising fee. Um, and then, dapat daw net of withholding na yun. And then, it shall also receive the advertiser or merchant the certificate of tax withheld at source for the amount of tax withheld. Um, I think the reason bakit ganito yung dineclare na process ng ng uh, BAR kasi ang assumption niya hindi lahat ng advertising entity ay companies some of the advertising entities may also be um, individuals no kaya i think kaya medyo very specific kagad siya na kailangan merong nakakaltas kagad na tax no um, and then it also mentioned here the merchant or re the retailer as an online advertiser kailangan bayaran niya yung online advertising fee uh, yung for the advertising entity net of 2% expanded withholding tax. Kailangan kaltasan niya kagad ng 2%. And then, kailangan makatanggap siya ng OR at kailangan yung 2% expanded withholding tax na kinaltas niya kay advertiser, kailangan niyang ibayad sa BAR. So again, this is an example, no? Na in the guideline, what BAR did, yung tumatanggap ng advertisement, sabi niya, kung anong kailangan mong gawin? Kailangan mag-issue ka ng OR Tapos, kailangan tanggapin mo na pagbayad niya sa'yo, may kaltas yan ng 2% at bibigyan kanya ng form 2307. Tapos, sinabi naman niya dun sa nag-advertise, kailangan bayaran mo siya pero tanggalan mo siya ng 2% expanded withholding tax. Kailangan makatanggap ka ng OR. Tapos, ikaw na nag-advertise, kailangan ikaw magbayad ng 2% tax para sa kanya. Um, I think ito yung challenge on how you translate yung mga real world na how payments are made compared to the online world. Kasi diba tingnan mo, technically it's hassle eh. Ako na nga yung magbaga-advertise, magbabayad na lang ako sa kanya, ako pa magkakaltas ng tax sa kanya, at ako pa magbabayad ng tax niya. So, parang ano kagad siya, ang dating niya hassle. Imbis na yung person na mag -e receive ng payment, mag or naman siya sa akin, Bakit hindi pa sapat yung OR niya? Eh, yung OR niya supposedly taxable na yun. Bakit kailangan magkahiwalay yung OR, yung taxes na nakadeclare as part of the OR? At bakit nakahiwalay pa yung 2% na expanded withholding tax? I think yan yung parang mga nagiging dilemma ngayon. No? I think yung usap-usapan no? in so far as online advertising 
uh, is concerned. Kasi parang ngayon, lumalabas yung burden of paying the tax. Napupunta doon sa advertiser. Ako na nga yung mag-advertise, ako pa magbabayad ng tax ng entity. Rather than problema na yun nung taong nakakonsume ng sale. No? Um, so, dun, dun misa nagkakaroon ng issue. So, I think, um, sana in the future, kung, let, let's say, kung may improve pa yung guidelines, so may improve pa yung process, mas mapadali pa yung process. And, naging clear lang talaga, kung the person receiving the sale is the one issuing OR, then, siya na siguro. At saka, di ba, parang weird. Ano yung ilalagay niya doon sa amount ng OR? So, magbabayad na siya ng tax for the OR, Tapos magbabayad, tapos tatanggalan mo pa siya ng 2% expanded withholding tax. Kung vatable pa siya, magbabayad pa siya ng vat. Parang dami-dami niyang tax, no? So, yun lang. Parang doon lang ako minsan na kukuntis sa kanya, no? So, I'm still having a discussion with uh, with an accountant on this one. Kasi medyo nalilito ako bakit parang ang daming tax na. Bakit doble-doble? Kung may vat siya, parang triple, no? Okay. And for credit card, banks, or cash payment, kung ano yung mga policies and procedures on how customers, on how they should receive taxes, the same will also uh, apply. Okay, so merong, okay. Now, let's talk about uh, online auction. Kaya pa? Okay pa kayo? <laughs> Sorry, ya, pati yung angst ko yata na share ko na sa inyo. Okay pa kayo dyan? <laughs> Okay pa. Sige. Thank you. So, let's talk about uh, online auction. So, when it comes to online auction, the way um, uh, the way uh, BAR sees this is that online auction is anything uh, conducted through the internet via an online service provider that specifically hosts such auction. So, may mga auction sites pa ba sa Philippines? Di ba? Meron pa, di ba? So, yung mga auction sites sa Philippines are covered by this guideline. Through this service, the seller sells the product or service to the person who bids the highest price. So, question. What if hindi ka nag-auction? Pero, kasi di ba, may mga auction sites ngayon na merong auction, pero at the same time, they allow you to buy the product straight. Yung sabihin, hindi na siya auction, parang straight price, hindi ka na nag-bid. Ano lang talaga siya? Um, para na siyang normal product na binibili mo. Oh, I'm auctioning this, whoever can bid it. Pero if you're willing to pay $100, bilin mo na siya. Wala na auction-auction. So, paano yung treatment pag ganon? Uh, from my understanding, basta in auction, itong process na to ang follow Pero if the, if the item is purchased from you straight, um, then ang treatment sa'yo is online merchant. Online merchant ka. So, that means that, di ba, kadalasan ng mga pinapa-auction natin, Either it's a collectible item or sometimes luma na, parang second hand na. Pero we're just trying to get a better deal out of it. So, technically, kahit na second hand, lumalabas, kahit na second hand yung binibenta mo, kailangan makakapag, ano ka, makakapag-produce ka ng uh, receipt para sa kanya. So, I guess yan ang challenge ngayon ng mga auction site. Kung paano niya imamanage yung uh, isang requirement na ganyan. No? So, if the buyer's payment for Voucher, coupon, or bid pack is to credit card companies. The audit or op, the auction web store are required to issue uh, a BAR registered invoice to the buyer, issue an acknowledgement receipt to the credit card company uh, for the amount received, and pay the commission of the credit card company net of 10% expanded of withholding tax. So, dito pala medyo challenging na siya kasi kung tutusin, may mga auction sites that does not process sales, no? Um, so, if they don't process sales and the purchase happens between the buyer and the seller, I guess if they earn a commission from it, then technically, hindi sila intermediary pero classified talaga sila as auction. Parang ganon. Although, kung ganon ang relationship, parang pwede mo rin sabihin, eh di si auction web store, para rin siyang intermediary kung siya ang nagpo-process ng payment. You can also refute it on that perspective, di ba? Kasi, if auction web stores would be the one to issue the, 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 the OR instead of the merchant, then technically, uh, para siyang intermediary na online merchant. So, lumalabas siya yung online merchant, hindi yung nagbibenta. So, ibig sabihin, kailangan talaga magkaroon na siya ng commission kasi required na kailangan 
makakapag-issue ng OR insofar as this guideline is concerned. And then, if the buyer's payment for the voucher, coupon, or bid pack is two banks, kailangan makapag-issue siya ng OR to the depositor or buyer. Ayan na naman. Issue acknowledgement receipt to the bank for the amount received. I really don't know kung paano gagawin yung issue acknowledgement receipt to the bank. Kasi I have never thought na makakapag-issue ako ng acknowledgement receipt. Kasi di ba imaginein mo, paano magkagawin talaga yun, no? Anyway, sige. And then, if the sale of the auction item to the highest bidder, ganun din, the auction or the web store, kailangan niya mag-issue ng OR for the winning bid price to the buyer and the bid winner. And um, so whether cash or ano. Now, I must admit, I got confused on this one kasi nung nakita ko yung term na voucher coupon. Kasi di ba, the way we look at voucher and coupon, we only hear of the words voucher and coupon when we talk about deal site. So it seems um, from the RMC, the way BAR look at deal sites, parang ang classification ni BAR sa kanya ay para siyang auction. And I guess the reason for that, I'm trying to just analyze, yun doon sa pag-analyze ko sa kanya, parang dahil siguro yung coupons or yung voucher ay limited in quantity. Like halimbawa, oh, we only have 10 coupons, you only have 20 coupons. Or yeah, we only have, 30 slots na that can avail of this price. So, technically, para siyang naka-auction. Parang gano'n na siguro naging tingin sa kanya. Kaya, ano siya, uh, parang siyang, kaya siya siguro tinreat as auction. Kasi parang lumalabas, after that period, wala na siya. So, para siyang naka-auction, whoever will get the item that is for auction. So, that's how they, that, it seems that's how they treated it. So, that this is one of the things that we will also clarify if deal sites fall under auction because this is the only part of the guideline where they use the term voucher and coupon. All right? Huh. O sige, bago tayo pumunta ng payment gateway, basahin natin ulit yung mga questions or inputs nyo. Hold on. Um... Lucella asks, regarding sa bank transaction, specifically auto-debit transaction, is still needing of OR? Or is it okay to see the payment through bank statement only for expanded withholding tax payment? Um, uh, lumalabas kasi, any payment that you receive, even though you, you arrange it to be automatically deducted, kailangan mo pa rin makapag-issue ng OR. Kaya, kaya yan yung challenge natin kasi what if nag-deferred payment si customer at dinaan niya dun sa credit card niya. Paano mo ngayon iti-charge kay credit card yung kanyang expanded withholding tax? No? And I think this is an issue that the credit card industry must deal with squarely with merchants. Kasi parang hirap kung tayo gusto natin mag-comply tapos yung mga credit card companies have no intentions in complying or have not explained the mechanics that they will implement para makapag-comply si merchant sa guideline na to. Kasi, ah, napansin nyo, hindi si credit card company ang magbabayad ng 10% expanded withholding tax. Tayong mga merchants ang magbabayad ng 10% expanded withholding tax nila. So, ibig sabihin, uh, actually, clarification pa nga yan, eh. Paano kung dumaan yung payment through GCash? O, di ba? Yung mga GCash, nakakaltas na rin yun, eh. O smart money, nakakaltas na rin yung mga fees nila. Tapos pag kinuha mo yung money mo, mag-over the counter ka, may charges pa sila kapag kinuha mo yung money over the counter. So, paano mo gagawin dun yung EWT? No? So, I guess that is something that we need to clarify further. So, pero for now, basta mag-ready na tayo, nandyan yan, kailangan mag-adjust na tayo dun sa process and we have to discuss it. Um, Rosella said, according kasi sa bank, they are not issuing OR in that kind of payment mode. Yes, hindi naman talaga nag issue si bank na OR. Tayo ang nag issue ng OR. Kaya nga, medyo weird yung mag issue, issue tayo ng acknowledgement receipt sa bank. Tayo pa rin naman na mag issue ng OR, hindi si bank. Kaya, ibig sabihin, ang, ang, hindi naman si bank ang issue. Ang issue lang natin si bank, 
para saan yung pag-issue natin ng AR sa kanya? Anong pakinabang ng BAR dun sa pag-issue na acknowledgement receipt sa bank? Talagang hindi ko pa makita kung para saan yun. I mean, saan siya magagamit for the audit purposes, no? Um, kasi di ba, anong gagawin ni, B- ni banko? Di parang dagdag filing lang yun sa kanila, di ba? And, and yung, um, ano ba yun? Ano yung sabihin ko? Ah, yung, yung, ang isa ko talaga yung expanded withholding tax sa credit card. I really don't know how we're gonna deduct it. Paano natin i-apply yun sa smart money? Paano natin i-apply yun sa Globe Gcash? Um, paano kung, oh, well, for now, yun na muna. Sige. Alright, so let's continue the discussion with the payment gateways. So payment gateways or payment settlement entities, uh, the way the guidelines um, are written, it refers to banks or other organizations and third-party settlement organization that has contractual obligation to make payment to the participating payees in the settlement of the transaction. So that means... Um, kung credit card payment gateway provider siya, o payment gateway provider siya, whether bank siya, or uh, an independent company, or Gcash, or Smart Palala, or whoever receives payment in our behalf uh, for our customers and remits it, remits it to us as merchants, they are classified as payment gateway. No? So including credit card companies, banks, financial institutions, and bill paying services. So, yung bill paying services, clarify natin yan. So, halimbawa, if 7-Eleven accepts payment for you as a merchant, then automatically payment gateway sila, classified sila under this survey, under this guideline. So, ito yung nakalagay dito. Credit card companies or any payment gateway in that regard are obliged to issue payment confirmation in the name of the merchant and seller for the purchase price charged to the buyer. And then they also need to remit to merchant seller the price less expanded withholding tax of 1%. So so mapansin nyo, medyo weird no. So pag nagremit si credit card sa atin nag nagdeduct siya na half of 1%. Pero tayo kakaltasan din natin si credit card ng 10% expanded withholding tax. Nakita niyo yung nakita niyo yung confusion. <laughs> Actually, dito ako nalilito talaga, no? So, so si, credit, si payment gateway, kinakaltasan niya si merchant, less of expanded withholding tax of one, half of 1%, pero tayong merchant, dinedactan natin si credit card ng 10% expanded withholding tax, okay? So, so they will remit it to the BIR and receive a grid commission from the merchant net of expanded withholding tax of 10%. So, so magkakaroon pa ng dispute diyan. Yung 10% is that net is that 10% after the EWT or is that 10% on the gross, no? Hi, okay. <laughs> Sige. Uh pagdating sa freight forwarders and online website administrators. Actually, uh dito pa lang medyo na confused din ako kasi um Oh, yung sa advertising kanina, kung to si may confusing part, pero hindi ko na lang siya nilagay sa PowerPoint. Kasi as much as possible, I want the PowerPoint presentation to be unbiased and just report it as is. Kung baga, itong mga confusion ko, sa writing ko na lang siya sinasabi kung saan ako nako-confuse sa kanya. Doon sa online advertising kanina, kaya ako na-confuse kasi yung portion ng merchant, Ang assumption ng guideline, si merchant ang tumatanggap ng bayad. Although nakalagay doon, may earlier provision siya that says that the advertising entity receives the money. Pero meron siyang portion doon sa online merchant na binanggitan naman niya, ipayment is through bank, through credit card, through cash. Parang na i siya doon kahit na hindi siya dapat nandun. Kasi at the end of the day, ang role ni merchant sa isang online advertising relationship, siya yung nagbabayad sa advertising entity. So, medyo nag- nag- naguluhan ako sa kanya doon. So, nilagay ko na siya doon sa website. I stated that as a confusion. So, mapansin nyo, medyo may mga gray areas tayo dapat i-clarify. Ngayon, ito, freight forwarders, and I don't know why, pero nasama ang online website administrators there. So, sabi dito, if payment is to bank or over-the-counter, uh, banks are obliged to issue 
validated bank deposit slip in the name of the merchant to the depositor buyer and remit the amount to the merchant. Um, okay. Now, if the payment is to the for the freight forwarders and the online website administrators are likewise obliged to issue electronic OR or manual OR for the service fees paid, paid by the merchant or advertiser. So, parang sinasabi lang na pag gumamit ka ng courier, kailangan mag-issue siya ng OR. Yun lang ang sinasabi dito. No? Yung mga payment gateways, pag uh, they are obliged to issue bank deposit slips in the name of the merchant and remit the amount to the merchant. So, parang sinasabi lang kung banko ka, kailangan mag-remit ka. Kung freight forwarder ka, kailangan mag-remit. Basta kailangan mag-OR ka rin. No? So, any person engage in internet commerce who fails to comply with applicable tax laws, rules, and regulation shall be subject to the imposition of penalties provided for under the existing laws, rules, and regulations. In addition to the imposition of penalties pursuant to the applicable sections under Chapter 2, Chapter 4, Title 10 of the National Internal Revenue Code. Mahaba yan. So, kasama dyan yung mga non-filing, um, pag alimbawang nag-misrepresent ka rin ang declaration mo, no? uh, among others. So lahat yan may mga corresponding penalties. Kapag syempre kung delayed yan, umabot na matagal, may mga penalties ka pa rin. Like for instance, kung meron ka palang mga nawawalang papers, yung mga bungi-bungi, ano kagad yon 25,000 kagad yon no? Yung mga bungi-bungi na paper filing. So, kaya you really have to start fixing them. No? And sometimes nga nakakalungkot eh, kasi parang to the point na nakukuha mo suggestion, isara mo na lang yan, gawa ka na lang ng bago. Kasi baka mamaya pasakitin lang yan yung ulo mo. Um, baka kakafix mo, parang imbis na matulungan ka, baka mamaya habulin ka ng habulin, maging masakit pa siya sa ulo. So it's confusing, no? So it's really, kaya it's, it is important that you choose your accountants very well. Huwag kayo magpadala sa magsasabi sa inyo na um, madaling ayusin yan. Kasi at the end of the day, ikaw pa rin as merchant ang magbe-bear ng accountability. Hindi yung mga people that we hire to handle our books for us. Kaya make sure that when you get people to handle your books, they, they, they really know and they should always keep in mind that they need to protect you in terms of by making sure that you do it right and avoid the situation that you got poor advice and you thought it's okay and then later on you found out that that is not allowed and therefore illegal and you pay higher fees and the person is no longer there anymore and has left the country no so for one reason or another or maybe they're missing in action already so kaya kailangan ayusin natin siya okay so if you want to know more uh, i'll be uploading the video after this webinar and we'll be putting it online and i will also be updating the article uh, based on the inputs uh, you have given and uh, if, you have, if you want to learn more about e-commerce in the Philippines, I encourage you to go to digitalfilipino.com slash e -com. We have uh, free webinars there that uh, you can uh, participate in. And um, like, uh, 